This is Liberty Under Attack Radio, hosted by Shane and Matt. Your place for documented truth and where freedom is the only agenda. We must end the terror war. We're live. Good evening and welcome. You're listening to Liberty Under Attack Radio on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. Our website is libertyunderattack.com and I'm your host Shane, broadcasting live from Ancapistan, deep in the heart of Somalia. With me are my co-hosts Matt and Stan. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Uh, how are you doing this evening? Uh, I've had an odd day. Let's see if we can throw this one out of the ballpark for our listeners tonight, Shane. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it. Stan, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Doing good. Right, awesome. Awesome. We'll move forward. Uh, so we'd be happy to uh, hear from our listeners this evening. If you've got a question for Stephanie Murphy or questions or comments on Austrian economics, please give us a call. Number is 218-895-3818 or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. And the first hour, we'll take calls whenever, but uh, in the second hour, we'll have to be after uh, Mises Boot Camp number one. So I wanted to mention a current happening here in the communist state of Illinois briefly before we uh, move forward. On August 25th of this year, I know I'm a little behind, uh, HB uh, House Bill 4276 was filed with the clerk and underwent its uh, first reading to the House. It is uh, titled Cannabis Regulation and Taxation. I'm going to read a, a short excerpt from a website called International High Life. Uh, there's one interesting point they make, but the rest just shows a complete lack of understanding in regards to government in general. So uh, take it with a grain of salt, and I'll obviously let you know which part I think is important. Um, so, quote, as you guys probably know so far, popular vote is the reason behind uh, marijuana being legalized for uh, med medical purposes and for recreational use. So what does this mean? Uh, well, it means that states which are starting to become green actually give a fuck about their people. Well, the federal government doesn't. So, for instance, uh, marijuana might be legal in Colorado, but under federal law, it is still illegal. It is still classified as a Schedule One drug, right beside cocaine and heroin. The light at the end of the tunnel, I guess, according to these folks. Quote, however, things might just turn around. Last month, a bill was introduced in Illinois which would authorize the taxation and regulation of marijuana in a similar way to that of alcohol. This will ultimately mean that the plan would become legal and effectively nullify the federal green prohibition. Uh, this bill is called, well, it's just in there. But yeah, there's, uh, there's one point that they, that they mention. Um, Illinois will become the first state to legalize marijuana for recre recreational purposes through the legislature rather than popular vote. Um, that's the interesting point I wanted to mention. But the rest of this is kind of, uh, uh, kind of ridiculous. Apparently, uh, the communist state of Illinois doesn't give a shit about its people. I can tell you that right now. Um, and plus, uh, what's kind of interesting about this bill is, um, let me just read from it real quick. Hey, TJ, I'm live right now, so <laughs> jeez. Um, but yeah, let me read from this bill real quick. So um, section one, short title, uh, this act may be cited as the Cannabis Regulation and Taxation Act, uh, section five, paragraph A. In the interest of allowing law enforcement to focus on violent property crimes, generating revenue for education and other public purposes and individual freedom, the state finds and declares that the use of cannabis shall be legal for persons 21 years of age or older and taxed in a manner similar to alcohol. Obviously, just in line with alcohol, 21 years, 21 years and older. And there actually is a mention that uh, civil asset forfeiture cannot be used when it comes to cannabis. So I guess that's a good thing. But um, the bill was uh, referred to the Rules Committee, which is about the third of 20-something steps. And uh, I'm sure it will die there. Um, now, I'm, I'm all for not tossing people in cages for victimless crimes, but I do despise the taxing and regulating aspect. It's kind of a concession. Uh, the money they earn from uh, legalization of cannabis is only going to be used on other terrible shit uh, that the state does on a daily basis. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, and I wish these marijuana activists wouldn't wouldn't make concessions with the state uh, because, I mean, the, the state obviously doesn't mind taking in more tax revenue, and that's kind of uh, the goal for from this entire marijuana legalization thing we're seeing uh, today. So, Matt, uh, do you have any updates uh, for the listeners this evening? Yes, I do. I finished writing my third part of the Anarchist Odyssey of the Federalist Papers, and I've also completed my article, Defense My Thoughts, regarding my interview last time with Frankie Val from Quite Frankly TV, titled Anarchist Axioms Against Electioneering. Frank gave a positive review of it, 
and some book recommendations, which is good for me as the author. Feel free to check them out on my on our website. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Matt. Stan, what about you? Uh, do you have anything on your mind before we move forward? Um, just some stuff that would be great for uh, Fascist Book tonight. Okay. So. All right, well, well, we'll save it for fascist book then. Yeah. So, all right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Liberty Under Attack is covered under a BIPCOT no government license, which allows reuse by anyone except for governments or their agents. Uh, make sure to learn more at BIPCOT.org. So, again, I'm your host, Shane, and you're tuning into Liberty Under Attack Radio. And you can now find LUA on numerous smartphone apps like TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, iTunes, and also uh, at the website, LibertyUnderAttack.com. So if you miss a broadcast, there are plenty of ways to catch up, although we'd uh, much prefer you listen live and uh, give us a call. Um, so um, we're certainly happy to uh, have all of you here with us this evening as we dive into some interesting subjects. Uh, we'll be joined by uh, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, the uh, host of Pork Therapy and uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin in the first hour. And we'll be introducing you to the Austrian School of Economics in the second hour. So definitely some good subjects. Um, but first, as always, there are some, uh, some updates I released two more articles this week. Uh, the first one is titled A Bandit Gang Writ Large Mental Health Action Plan. In this article, I go back uh, to the month of May and examine one of my predictions. It was a quite easy one to make, I will say, but I was correct that taxes would have to be increased to fund this costly, ref costly reform. And uh, yeah, the sales tax in uh, Bloomington and Normal went up a whole 1%. So um, yeah, definitely go check that out. The next one uh, is in addition to... Uh, um, the Adventures in Illinois Higher Education Series. It is titled Race and Gender Are Social Constructs. Uh, you can probably ascertain what this one is about based off of previous editions. But yeah, definitely some more interesting stuff in uh, Sociology 101. And I have received, uh, I've, gotten, I've gotten some great feedback on the article, so please do check it out. I think it's probably one of the best ones I've written uh, thus far. And you can find all of those at uh, libertyunderattack.com. And uh, we also have spoken discourses available. So if you're on your drive to work uh, or driving anywhere, wherever you're going, you can listen uh, to all of the articles on the go. Uh, so definitely uh, no reason really to not check them out. So before we move on to the meat and potatoes of this broadcast, our favorite politician, Barney Sandler's, was interviewed by CNN in regards to privacy, and I think we could all learn a thing or two from King Barney. Uh, so, producer, please cue up clip one. This question of privacy in the digital age, how, does it, how much does it concern you? Oh, that's a great question, Larry, and I believe that we have a fundamental right to privacy when it comes to what type of memes you may or may not enjoy. Uh, it's none of the NSA's business what type of memes you as a private citizen are into, be they nice memes, spicy memes, uh, dank memes, ironic memes, uh, underground memes, or uh, whatever your taste in memes may be. And uh, the average person who goes to the internet and makes a meme, I believe that they should know that the NSA is still in your OC and posting it to Tumblr. To Tumblr, Larry. How can you keep your rare pepes rare when the NSA steals them and posts them to sites like that? It's a violation of your rights, and you should refuse to accept it. I refuse to accept that as our reality. And when I'm the president of America, the NSA is going to get memed on. Well said. Yep. I agree with Larry King. Well said, uh, Barney Sandlers. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, Matt Stan. <laughs> I mean, Barney Sandlers 2016, I mean, he's pretty heavy on his meme policy. I think that would be good for America. Yep. No more dank memes. Need. <laughs> Go yeah, Matt. so <laughs> go ahead, Matt. I believe Barney Sanders is the best candidate for not the president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, dank memes uh, and rare pay pays 2016. Yeah. yeah. What's uh, <laughs> NSA off my rare pay pays? For a better America. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's from a page called Barney Sandler's 2016. They're putting up some hilarious stuff on uh, on uh, Barney Sandler's. And I think there's one for Dolan Tramp too. So definitely uh, go enjoy the satire. So as I mentioned, uh, we are joined by Stephanie, uh, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, host of Pork Therapy and uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin. Uh, she has a PhD, I think, in biochemistry. Chemistry, and if I'm wrong, she can correct me. Uh, she's also an anarchist and is very well known in the liberty movement. So without further ado, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, welcome to Liberty Under Attack Radio. It's truly a pleasure to have you on and be speaking with you. Hey, Shane. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm glad to be here. Uh, not a problem, not a problem. So, uh, first off, do you prefer Dr. Murphy or, or Stephanie? <laughs> oh my gosh, Stephanie, please. Stephanie, okay, okay. All right, just just thought I would be courteous and ask. So, uh, how are you doing this evening? 
Good. Yeah. Um, just chilling out in New Hampshire. I've lived here for about nine years, actually a little more than nine years. And I moved here uh, to participate in the Free State Project back in 2006. And uh, yeah, the, the leaves are beautiful this time of year. It's changing colors. We got the peak uh, leaf peeping season going on. So yeah, nice place to be. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. So Stephanie, I first heard of you at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest uh, from your, uh, what I heard to be, I unfortunately didn't participate, but your uh, kick-ass yoga sessions. Uh, <laughs> so I was definitely hoping to snag an interview with you there, but unfortunately, I mean, the, the weekend just kind of uh, escaped me. Uh, it went a little oh, too it flew quickly. by. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did. Definitely did. So on that note, how'd you enjoy the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest? I know this, that wasn't your first year, or this year wasn't your first year. Yeah, that was actually the second time I've been to it. I had a great time. I like to teach yoga at these uh, freedom festivals. I've done it at Pork Fest for the last, uh, I think, like five or six years. And yeah, yoga, I know it's not everybody's thing. Some people have some like stereotypes or preconceptions about yoga. Uh, for example, there were some yoga virgins at my class this year at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. And, and they said, oh, I thought it, it wasn't going to be a workout. I thought it was just like slow stretching, but I was totally wrong. I was really sore afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you actually go to the class or did you just hear about it? Um, well, I, I didn't actually. I was up at the Spontaneous Order Tent. I still love that name. I was up at the Spontaneous yeah. Order Tent when it was going on. But uh, yeah, right unfortunately, I, I don't know why I didn't do it. I guess just uh, wanted to. I've never actually witnessed someone doing yoga. So I, th I thought I wanted to get the wanted to see what it was like before I actually tried it. So maybe um, if you're there next year, maybe I'll maybe I'll take part in it. I've heard it's uh, I've heard it's a good time. So. Yeah. All right. We're building up to the next time we uh, have a yoga <laughs> class. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I really like yoga because I actually do think it kind of relates to freedom um, because it's really about like creating more space in your body, your mind, uh, just being present with what's actually going on right in this moment, taking a minute to check in with yourself and um, yeah, just just honor what's, what's going on for you. And uh, so much in our busy lives, we don't take the time to do that. So that's what I enjoy about yoga. It really does give me a sense of more freedom and choice, autonomy over what's going on in my life. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And that's what I've heard. I've heard the same thing with meditation too. And I, I've, I've kind of, I haven't started dabbling in those things yet. But I, I do, I do think they, they can definitely. Uh, one thing I've kind of said for a while is you have to free yourself first. And if you're yeah. a slave to your own mind, it's going to be quite hard to free others. So I do think that yoga and meditation could be definitely be important and kind of uh, putting things in perspective uh, and things of that nature. So. Yeah. Yeah, without getting too woo-woo, I mean, right? Like, I love the phrase, don't be so open-minded that your brain falls out. <laughs> right? There yeah. Go. I don't get into some of the, uh, some of the, uh, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to offend anybody, but I don't get into some of the woo-woo stuff. But yeah, I definitely do enjoy the benefits of just taking some time to do something completely for yourself, like, like a yoga workout. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. So um, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell the listeners a little about your various radio shows. Uh, I know you're doing a lot. So if you want to cover, um, give place, give uh, the listeners a place to go, because there's so many, I didn't even know which one to pull. Um, where do you want yeah. people to go to? And also your your credentials as, as far as being a, um, a, a, a doctor, so to speak. So. Cool. Okay. Well, yes, yeah, I don't blame you, Shane. I'm sorry. I'm like one of the worst guests to have on a podcast because it's, oh, really, no, <laughs> no. it's really hard to introduce me because I do a lot of different things and I'm kind of bouncing around from projects to projects a lot. Um, but I guess I'll start uh, with the main thing that I do, which is I am a voice actor and yeah, I narrate audiobooks. I do radio and TV commercials, done a lot of different projects like within the Liberty Movement and the Bitcoin world. And um, yeah, just like to bring projects to life with my voice. And I started out, I'm a voice actor now, but I wasn't always. I made a major career change a couple of years ago. I used to be a scientist. And as you noted, I have a PhD in biochemistry. And so, yeah, we used to work in science, but I didn't find it to be completely meeting my needs for uh, freedom <laughs> in many different ways. Wasn't quite happy doing that. So uh, yeah, I switched to what at the time was a hobby for me. I had started podcasting back in 2009 with my show Pork Therapy, which was like a relationship talk show. And um, I liked that so much. I liked it more that, than what I was doing as uh, 
as my job at the time in science. So I started building up. I was a part of a couple of other podcasts. I started getting into Bitcoin a couple of years ago and uh, became a Bitcoin user and enthusiast and uh, pretty soon got a role on the, the show Let's Talk Bitcoin, which is a popular Bitcoin podcast. And I've been a part of that for over two years now. Um, other podcasts and well, actually, I, I've also been on, on the radio on the show Free Talk Live, which is a nationally syndicated talk radio show. I was part of that for like three or four years, I think. Um, so quite a lot of radio and podcasting in my background. And uh, yeah, what else is, is there to say? I guess um, I've covered all the major bases. Uh, can you think of anything <laughs> Um, the, uh, there's only one other one. Uh, free aid, aren't free you? Aid. Free aid as well. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. Okay, so free aid is an organization that I volunteer with. It was started back about uh, five years ago, and free aid is basically an association of uh, medical professionals who are of a voluntarist or liberty loving uh, persuasion. And what we do is go to events and provide first aid on a volunteer basis for people there who need it. So like for instance, at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, it's out in the middle of the woods. People need stuff like, uh, I don't know, anything from sunscreen and bug spray to like removing ticks to getting band-aids and get, just patching up little cuts and bruises. So free aid does that. And we also do um, health and safety education, teach people about CPR and other health and wellness stuff. And we provide a place for liberty-loving health professionals to network. So it's a it's a cool like mutual aid kind of volunteer project. That uh, the other purpose of it is really to show how something like healthcare could be provided, or like one model of how healthcare could be provided on a voluntary basis in a free society. Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I definitely like what you do, what uh, you guys are doing with free aid. I, I do think some, um, um, I guess, some mutual is mutual uh, or co or mutual organizations like that are definitely definitely beneficial. And uh, yeah, I think you guys are providing a, a great example for um, for what healthcare could be like instead of this uh, <laughs> this uh, federally mandated Obamacare that we have today, which is not going to. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure free aid is probably a lot more effective than uh, a lot more effective and efficient than. Uh, then Obamacare will turn out to be. But yeah, I think you guys are doing a, a great thing with that, uh, uh, with free aid. So I'd like to talk about, uh, um, I guess, the Free State Project. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know where you live, Manchester, Keene, or anything like that, but uh, um, what made it, What motivated you to uh, move to New Hampshire and join the uh, Free State Project? Well, um, I had been a liberty lover for many years. I would say since, I would say since I was born, <laughs> right? But we're all born free, but then we get like the freedom beaten out of us by various institutions like yeah. school. So mm -hmm. yeah, I've been a liberty lover for my whole life, but I just remember growing up in Massachusetts and uh, feeling really lonely because there weren't too many others like me. There weren't too many other people who were listening to Free Talk Live and reading things like the Mises, like Mises.org, which I used to read back then in the, the early 2000s. Um, and I know you're going to have an intro to Austrian economics next, so that yep. that uh, ties in with that nicely. But yeah, I just felt I just felt pretty lonely because it seemed like nobody around me shared those values. And at that time, in the early 2000s, the internet was in existence, but it wasn't like networking on the internet wasn't really a thing yet. The social networking was not really developed as much as it is now. now. Um, so when I heard about the Free State Project, I was like, "Wow, this sounds great." You know, it's a group of people who share these same values, which I can't currently find in my life <laughs> nearby mm -hmm. me. And uh, it, it was also like right in the neighborhood. You know, New Hampshire was really close to where I already was in Massachusetts. And I was a college student. I didn't have much stuff. I didn't own a house. I didn't uh, have much tying me down. So I thought, all right, well, as soon as I'm done with college, I'm going to go move up to New Hampshire. And uh, that's what I did. Yeah. And uh New Hampshire, New Hampshire, when I first got there was, uh, it was many years before the free state project still hasn't been officially triggered, right? Because there's, there's this idea that there's going to be 20,000 people who sign a pledge to all move to New Hampshire and yep. they don't, they don't quite have 20,000 signatures yet. Uh, although they do have like 18,000, so they're getting super close to it, but at the time, back in 2006, when I moved to New Hampshire, 
Uh, there were significantly fewer than that. But a few people had decided, well, you know, screw it. We're not going to wait till there's 20,000 pledgers that sign up for this thing. We're going to move now <laughs> and just start yeah. living free in New Hampshire. So that's kind of what I did. And yeah, at first I was a little shy. I didn't um, quite get into the community. I, I, I did like go to some meetups and I actually started a local meetup, but it took me a couple of years to really come out of my shell. Like I think most libertarians uh, <laughs> are a little bit shy and uh, myself oh, yeah. included. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just wonderful. It was like, I noticed a difference as soon as I got here, just just the fact of knowing that there were other individuals here who also valued peace and freedom was yeah. just, it made such a huge difference to my sense of well-being. And then as time went on, um, as I started to, you know, just grow and get, evolve and explore ideas a little bit more, you know, my ideas about liberty developed even further. I became like a full-on voluntarist and um, totally left the political stuff behind um, and I noticed on your website, you have a thing that says like, get rid of your voter registration or something. Yeah, I wish I could do that. I'm going to, I'm going to check that out actually. <laughs> yeah. And there's actually, now that you, since you mentioned that there's about, I think there's 39, I went through like all of the statutory and administrative code and to find how, how to do it in plenty of, in 39 different states. I was only able to find 39, but if I remember correctly, I think New Hampshire is on there. So, I mean, if you, if you open that PDF, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. So yeah, that right was on. a, that was a project. It was a pain in the ass, but I, I, I really do promote uh, canceling the voter registration. It's cool. uh, one of the ways to, obviously, it's not going to like, it's not going to create this anarchist society, but it's it definitely, it cuts one more tie to the state. So I do think that's definitely a positive. So. Well, there's really something to be said for like the things in your life that you have control over. And you do have control over whether you participate in politics, whether you give it your moral support. Um, and so any way that you can withdraw your moral support, which is not required in any way by the state, like you don't have to be enthusiastic about paying taxes. You don't like, they're going to put you in jail if you don't pay your taxes, but you don't have to like it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't yeah, have definitely. to vote. You don't have to participate. You don't have to say, yeah, I pick this one. I sanction this one when Voters you don't like any of the choices. So, um, yeah, if you don't have to, if you don't have to participate, don't you know just withdraw yep. your consent in any way that you can so yeah that was one of the things that i realized after a few years of living in new hampshire i remember it back in 2008 that was like my last uh clinging by my last threads to politics and i was uh, excited about like ron paul's uh, presidency you know like his running for the presidency his political campaign but those hopes were quickly dashed on the rocks when you know the all the shenanigans happened and he didn't uh he didn't even get like 10 percent of the vote even in new hampshire where there's all these activists and yeah. uh i know that was discouraging for a lot of people but for me that was just like okay i i I'm aware that this happens every four years and people continue to get fooled and somehow they keep coming back for more. It's like they're gluttons for punishment. And I really, the system is completely rotten to the core. It's not possible to make any meaningful change from within it. So yeah. I'm just not going to participate at all. And uh, after I decided that, I suddenly felt a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. And that leads into this next question, because, I mean, um, you are in New Hampshire uh, as part of the Free State Project. And obviously their main goal is in, uh, is infiltrating the KKK and turning it into the NAACP. <laughs> so, I mean, what is what is your current attitude towards? I mean, I, I, I don't remember who it was, but uh, the term anarchist politician makes me cringe. But yeah. Um, I mean, what what are your thoughts on on what's uh, on what they're doing uh, as far as like getting elected and repealing laws in Concord? Uh, what are your thoughts yeah. on that? I'm really glad you asked about that, Shane. You're a good interviewer because yeah, that's like exactly what was on my mind. That's kind of where I was where I was going with this whole train of thought. Is <laughs> yeah, I think that the Free State Project started out, you know, from its philosophical roots with Jason Soren's thinking of this idea while he was a graduate student at Yale. Um, as a political thing like yep. the idea was to like get into the new hampshire government and like make it even freer than it already is um and i think a lot of the people who were early movers to new hampshire didn't share that like they they were actually way more of a voluntarist mindset they weren't so interested in uh, participating in the political system and a lot of people do move to new hampshire 
while still clinging to ideas about government and minarchism and then become full on voluntarists. But um, I, I feel like after living here for nine years, personally, I've kind of moved beyond even focusing on what's going on in New Hampshire. <laughs> like, um, it's great to be among a community of people, but the community aspect is the, the only thing I really like about the Free State Project. Mm -hmm. I just, I like that there are other individuals here who share at least some of my values or more, more of my values than your average Joe. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't pay any attention to what is going on in the Free State political realm <laughs> among Free State Project people. I just try to concentrate on getting as much freedom as I can in my own life. So what that means to me is getting a job that is location independent, that I can do on the internet, that I can... Um, enjoy and really be happy and fulfilled doing, having meaningful relationships and surrounding mm -hmm. myself with people who are also living free and who also care about um, freedom and don't care about things like politics. And um, yeah, just kind of having, picking and choosing the things that I have control over to get myself a greater sense of freedom in my life without depending on or asking permission from things like governments or thinking that I can change government because I can't. I'm just one person. And uh, even if I wanted to try, it's a hell of a lot of effort for not much payoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I, w I wasn't going to bring this up, but um, since you mentioned the canceling of voter registration, we have a when you're on Free Talk Live, um, I had a, one of our one of our colleagues uh, called in. He was the one that showed me about canceling the voter registration. He called into Free Talk Live, and uh, you were one of the hosts on there. And, I think uh, I remember of, that actually. <laughs> yeah, he he came in. He was like, God, I just I figured this out, canceling your voter registration. And uh, he like he 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 um told me the story probably a couple months ago, but you were the only one, like, the, the other hosts were kind of like, no, 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 nope, can't do that, can't do that. And you were the one that kind of stepped up and said, you know, yeah. it's actually not that bad of an idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally remember that call, and I'm glad that he called in about that. And yeah, on, to be completely honest, I'm not on Free Talk Live anymore, and, and one of the reasons was that, yeah, I did feel kind of a disconnect with their interest in politics. Um, Especially Ian used to be way more of a voluntarist mindset and be like completely outside the political system. Mm -hmm. um, even though I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of like activism in the, I'm not really a fan of the type of activism that where you get arrested, you know, and yeah. you try to do civil disobedience. I don't think that's like the path to freedom either no. for me or for anyone else necessarily. But um, I appreciated Ian's like, um, just complete refusal to participate in the political system and just complete like mockery of it. Um, but even now, like in recent years, he's kind of come back around full circle and, and started participating in politics again. And uh, yeah, that just doesn't, I don't, I don't find that appeals to me personally. You know, I, I don't like it. Uh, and so I felt yeah a little bit of a disconnect with just the, the free talk live host uh, community. Um, but maybe I was representing a viewpoint that, needed to be there <laughs> yeah 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 no, at least i, I like to think so yeah. yeah so we are we're coming to this first break but uh um i did want to ask this final question uh in regards to the free state project and and keen uh what, what is your current uh, or actually what is your attitude towards the like the folks at the keen activist group and you kind of already mentioned that so i figure this will be a, a quick answer yeah i mean i i like them they're nice people uh i i give them credit for like doing something taking action but um, the tactics that they use are not really tactics that I, I want to use. So, understandable. Is that <laughs> understandable? Well, we are coming to this first break. Um, again, if you have any questions for Steph Dr. Stephanie Murphy, uh, feel free to give us a call two one eight eight nine five three eight one eight or on Skype at FPRN Radio Live. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into two of the items on uh, the direct action list, uh, psychotherapy and journaling. Um, so you're going to get a sneak peek of the direct action series using the economic means of making money rather than the political. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after the short break. Too big to fail when the banksters all need to be in jail. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society, the wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money, controlled not by banks, 
governments or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. doTERRA essential oils true gifts of the earth provide you with the perfect prepper tool the family physician kit 10 certified pure therapeutic grade oils to provide the care you need for your family's everyday health concerns and potential medical issues you may encounter when sheltering in place or bugging out visit essentialnewparadigm.info to view the complete product line and ask how you can receive 25 percent off each and every order don't Don't delay delay. your Your family's family's health health depends depends on you. you health depends on you This is Niz from Disassociation Nation. As many of you know, I'm an avid vapor. And if you're like me, you're tired of being charged ridiculous amounts of cash for a disappointing experience when flavors just don't deliver. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to Vapor Renew, a Flavor West company. If you're into mixing and creating your own custom e-liquids, Flavor West has everything you need to make delicious, satisfying flavors. It doesn't matter if you're a flavor chaser or if you love the look and feel of those big, beautiful, puffy plumes. FlavorWest.com can provide you with everything you need. Let's face it, if you vape, e-liquid is an ongoing expense. And if you're a dripper like me, then you know that blowing through a $30 bottle of juice isn't unheard of. Why pay more than you have to? So for excellent quality juice made right here in the United States, head over to VaporRenew.com where they have hundreds of flavors pre-mixed and ready to vape at the most reasonable prices you'll find. Use coupon code RENU for an extra 10% off your entire order. Great juice at a great price and 10% off. Support companies that support Liberty by making your next purchase at Vapor Renew. Or for mixing supplies, don't forget FlavorWest.com. Hi, everyone. This is Shane, the host of Liberty Under Attack Radio on the Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. If you follow LUA, you know that we put out a lot of content, the biggest compilation being my adventures in Illinois law series. In this series, I witnessed tyranny firsthand, and it was one of the major reasons I jumped off the Menarchist ship and came to true freedom, which is volunteerism. This series is now available in anthology and audiobook format at libertyunderattack.com. Again, that is libertyunderattack.com. Make sure to tune in live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on fprnradio.com. Thanks for listening to FPRN. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to start your own show with FPRN, advertise with us or donate to the network or to your favorite shows, check out our website at www.fprnradio.com. Are you tired of seeing bullshit distractions, fallacious nonsense, and things that aren't relevant to your life coming across your fascist book news feed? Well, we are too. This segment is devoted to showing you the absurdity, irrationality, and overall proof of how well the distraction campaign is going. Liberty Under Attack brings you the fascist book trends of the day! And let's see what we've got today on Fascist Book. All right, so Umpqua Community College, uh, police say Oregon campus gunmen died by suicide as officers arrived. Uh, I thought we already knew that a long time ago. I'm not really sure why that's still training on fascist book, but let's move forward. Doctors Without Borders, President Obama says probe launched into hospital bombing uh, that killed 22 people. Okay. Matt, you know anything about that? Uh, Can you repeat it, please? Uh, President Obama says probe launched into hospital bombing that killed 22. Probably it was a hospital bombing. I don't know anything about that. It was actually in Afghanistan. Uh, it's Afghanistan? Yeah. Okay. Huh. There you go. Yeah. Well. Horrifying. Oh, I know yeah. why. Doctors Without Borders has a really interesting reputation. Honestly. Exp- uh, expand upon that? What do you mean? Uh, it's kind of like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch where they have a vested interest to serve what the U.S. government wants. So, you know, they'll omit things. And, you know, there's there's a vested interest to keep silence about certain things. Where, you know, they will have frequent reports on, you know, our government making abuses and shit, right? Mm-hmm. But more often than not, they're focusing on other governments, which ironically are either funded by our government or, you know, they're getting bribes or whatever, and they're not going to focus on that shit. So... Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, there, there, right. There's all kinds of interesting inter, uh, internal corruption in these organizations, and <laughs> it's kind of ironic that they're called non-governmental, even though they are literally funded by governments. Yeah. 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 I definitely know what you mean. Definitely know what you mean. So let's move forward. Uh, looks. Let's see. Somerville High, Somerville High School police arrest four students after discovering a shooting plot at California school. 
And well, usually they don't do a very good job at stopping these things. So right. uh, I guess Normally that's it's uh, after the fact they find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess yeah, discovering a shooting oh. plot. What does that even mean? Like, did they? Did someone make a joke online or something, and they just blew and it way out of proportion? Or that's that's Probably. a good point too. That's a good point too, because I, I don't remember. I mean, people have been uh, snatched off Facebook for for a ridiculous thing. I think someone like made like like play, like did like a, a gun emoticon or something like that. And uh, there's been there's been some outrageous uh, um, things that have happened where they've where they've uh, arrested people. So I, I don't know. Maybe it was like uh, um, I don't know. We don't look into these stories on fascist book because we're trying to make fun of the news cycle here. So I guess maybe after the show, I'll look into it, but probably not. Yeah. Don't uh, worry. Neither does anyone look into those stories. I mean, <laughs> it's all just headlines. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Probably e including the people who write the stories. They don't look into it either. A cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would be golden is just have, uh, an article and post on Facebook that says no more dead puppies and see how many people like it. And then the rest of the article is just like, you know, just some bullshit, <laughs> not even related. Like, Oh, Hitler was right. Or some bullshit <laughs> like that. And, that, that and something I would you make people feel like an idiot when it comes out that that was just like a hoax the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get into uh, <laughs> some more, some, some political stuff here. What's, what's going on with, uh, Let's see. Let's see. Oh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Israeli Prime Minister, says nation in fight to death against Palestinian terror. Okay. Uh, ben Bernanke, ex-Federal Reserve Chairman, says more bankers should have gone to jail for recession. Well, why don't we start with him? Oh, I see. Because the Federal Reserve is not responsible. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. They're preventing these, these crashes. That's right. That's right. You know, funny story about Bernanke. He was coming to some... I don't know, some event like near a friend of mine, my friend wanted to go and troll him, but there were no tickets left to the event. And he said he was just going to print some more tickets because <laughs> that's what Bernanke does. <laughs> that's uh, okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. I get that. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. We'll go with one or two more here. Uh, let's see. Donald Trump, GOP presidential candidate says Middle East would be better off with Saddam Hussein. Okay, Matt thoughts. It'd be better wow. enough without the bombing. Yeah. The genocide. The genocide. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> the funny thing is, all the genocide and shit that he pulled off, the United States military admitted to giving him those weapons. They mm -hmm. gave him that chemical weapons capability to kill people that he's governing over. So it's fucking kept critical, honestly. And I wouldn't say that Iraq was better off with him, but it's certainly not better off without him either. So it's a mixed bag okay, for you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a huge mess. You know, like I, I was, uh, I've been ignoring it's politics so moment. much that I didn't even know like when the election was. I thought it was like this November, and so I found out just a couple days ago that we're going to have to deal with like these clowns for another year, and I was really yeah. disappointed. It's not actually <laughs> until a year from now. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I'm already getting really sick of it, and that's why I love the you satire too. pages. It's good, good kind yeah. of, I don't know, the sat yeah, the satire pages definitely make it bearable. Um, so yeah, that will conclude Fascist Book News for this night. I'm kind of mad football started back Shut up because most of the shit ball. in there is, is just football trends. Someone scored a touchdown or something, which doesn't really pertain yeah. much to liberty. So we do have a caller on the line. Uh, um, Kyle, are you there, brother? Howdy, gentlemen. How you doing this evening? Doing good, doing good. good. What's on your mind? Uh, I just kind of wanted to just uh, make more of a, of a comment or something that, to that effect. Uh, Stephanie, you've had my respect for years, but what I just heard you say in the last segment, I have even more respect for you now. And, uh, yeah, obviously I was the guy that actually called in years ago, and I'm kind of surprised you remembered that pleasantly, though. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, totally. I can't... And you sound really good, and thanks. I. I heard you say, I've, you've had my respect for years, and I totally re expected you to say, until now, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, uh, no, yeah, no. I'm glad to hear we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, um, it's, it's rather interesting, right, you know, in terms of how do you get people out of the state? And, you know, there have been some ideas bandied about over the years, and, you know, some, some are work better than others, you know. Uh, Political field trips might work for some people because they need to actually see government in action, not theoretically 
uh, like from a book or something, but actually experience the ickiness of government right in front of them as they, you know, haul people through the court system or whatever. But yeah. I just wanted to say that, you know, if you are interested in canceling your voter registration, that, that page on the LUA website is really the best one that's been assembled thus far. And yeah, I mean, like I said a while back, I mean, I think it's been two years since I've uh, become a, I guess you could say an ex-voter, I suppose. And I think actually, Shane, I think you did yours as well, I believe, uh, this year, right? Yep, yep, I did do that April back in April, yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah, I another fringe benefit I think of canceling the voter registration is not only just sit, like kind of symbolically withdrawing your participation from the political system, but also you won't get all that spam mail that the Republicans and Democrats send out. <laughs> Hopefully I you can get off those lists. I don't know. Maybe once you're on them, you're on them for life. <laughs> but maybe you also won't get called for jury duty. That would be another benefit. And you know, that was actually another thing that I had a lot of friction with on Free Talk Live. There were so many people that were like, You should want to do jury duty, but I mean it's it's actually a conscription. Like, why would you want to be a, like <laughs> If you volunteered for it, it would be one thing, but you're not volunteering. It's it's a compulsory thing. They call on you and they say you have to report to court and do free work for us, or else we're going to help the coercion. Hurt you, yeah. So I yeah I don't know. I just had so much trouble understanding why that was seen as such a a great thing among the liberty community. It doesn't. I don't see it that way at all. Well, you know, Stephanie, I uh, I wrote an anthology recently entitled "An Elusive Phantom of Hope." And in there, I basically went down the list of all working within the system, like running for office and voting and uh, a bunch of other things. And uh, one of those was, of course, a jury nullification. And it's funny what you mentioned just right now was really what Murray Rothbard said, Mr. Libertarian. He mentioned about the coerciveness of jury duty. But then you have organizations that want to work within the system and uh, basically turn the, the Camorra into the United Way, uh, you know, turning <laughs> evil into good. By yeah. alchemy, uh, essentially, just by the sheer force of will, which of course you know doesn't work, and and really a lot of the guys up at uh, up in New Hampshire, at least those that want to work within the system, it's very much it's the Fija mentality. Uh, they want to be stealth jurors, and they want to somehow survive void the air, and uh, you know get yeah. their guys in to try and release a defendant or prevent the defendant from going into the big house, as it were. And there's like no evidence of that ever working, ever. That I've been yeah, to. I completely agree with you, Kyle. And, you know, it's not just in jury duty. It's it comes out in the political system, too, like in the elections, you know, um, it's like they try to fly under the radar and just like convince people that they're like these respectable citizens or something that uh, uh, I don't know, are worthy of their vote. But I don't know, that just doesn't strike me as like really living with integrity, right? Like or. You're trying to convince people that you're something you're not. You're trying to fool them. I, I don't know. I, I just, it doesn't feel right to me, and I don't want to participate in it. Well, one more thing I may add before I hop off. Funny you should mention about uh, integrity, Stephanie. Earlier today, and Shane and the, and the rest of you guys, you might find this interesting. Apparently, there's some sort of coalition or, or some such thing of uh, alleged libertarians and, and similar folk who are, are campaigning on behalf of Ted Cruz. I think there was a video entitled Liberty Lovers for Ted Cruz or some such odd title, and it's basically <laughs> a bunch of, like, ex Ron Paul staffers who are promoting Ted Cruz, like he's some sort of uh, a, an emulation or role model of a bastion of freedom. And I was just scratching my head. It's like, <laughs> the same Ted Cruz who ignored my, uh, when I sent in the Under One Banner petition over a year ago, I didn't even get a reply back from his staff, by the way. But hey, at least Senator John Cornyn's staff uh, sent me back a, uh, a very polite fuck you letter. So at least <laughs> I heard back from John Cornyn. Does that mean John Cornyn actually, you know, gives a damn about his constituents more than Ted Cruz? I don't know. That's what happened with me. So I even sent in a formal legal petition. And, you know, Ted Cruz didn't even respond to me, so I don't really have much love for him, I'll put it that way. And uh, having yeah, said that, that, and having said that, that uh, thank you for having me on, and Stephanie, uh, I really admire you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm totally going to check out your anthology, too. I just wrote it down to Google it. Thanks for calling into Free Talk Live and calling in here and talking about these things and just being on the same page. All right. All right. Well, looks like he's... 
Um, but I did want to mention on the LUA website, uh, on the tab, Anthologies and Audiobooks, um, his Reformism Anthology is uh, all hosted at L LUA as well. Um, oh, cool. So that would be yeah, you're all in one place. Right on. So uh, thank you very much, Kyle, for the call. Um, definitely some good points you brought up. I did see that video he was referencing, and it is uh, truly atrocious. But um, let's move forward. The 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 next thing I want to talk about, uh, our co-host Matt, who uh, um, is with us uh, tonight, uh, he has an article called The Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action, which uh, provides about 30 economic means solutions to making yourself freer, uh, as well as options on uh, helping to free others. And this is just the first edition uh, we're trying to put together um, – you always hear like, well, if I don't vote, then like, uh, how, what am I supposed to do? Well, there's no excuse for that anymore with uh, the freedom umbrella of direct action. And there's two of those things on that list. Uh, psycho oh, go ahead, Matt. Or expecting government to answer anything. <laughs> True. Yep. Yep. We're yeah. ditching, ditching the political means. Um, but yeah, a couple I of those love that you guys are providing these alternatives. Like that is a question that comes up a lot. People say, well, what if I? What do I do if I don't participate in politics? Where can I? Basically, where can I put my energy that I have of the frustration with the way things are, the status quo? And yeah, like uh, good for you for offering some alternatives and having stuff like journaling and psychotherapy on there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, definitely give uh, definitely props to uh, Matt and also Kyler, last caller. He assisted in putting together that list. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of thing, a lot of really positive things on there. And psychotherapy and journaling are two things that could definitely um, or that have I'd the potential really to the help make someone freer. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. But I was Matt. Did you have something to say, man? Sorry, it's coming through a little. Um, we're kind of overlapping here when we're speaking. But go ahead, sir. Um, well, Stephanie, I'd just like you to, you know, give the article a read and give it a review. Um, I'm glad you really support the idea of the Freedom Umbrella. That's really awesome. Yeah, right on. Um, on that note, um, I'm actually really interested in yoga, as you mentioned before. That's really uh -huh. cool. Um, especially, like, for mental health, because yeah. I've done meditation before, but, um, I think there's a method I'm missing that yoga could probably provide, you know. So I'd be really happy if we could, like, meet up and, you know, make that happen. That'd be pretty sweet. Cool. Well, yeah, I teach yoga every year at Pork Fest, and uh, I guess maybe it'll become a thing at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. So, And maybe there'll awesome. be more fests <laughs> that I'll be teaching yoga at. Actually, I've kind of thought about starting, like, a Freedom Yoga website, too, but it's just... Um, you know, it's kind of on the back burner. I'm pretty busy with my voiceover work, and so I haven't life. haven't quite had a chance to set that up yet. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So let's let's get into um, into those two things here. So, can you tell the listeners what psychotherapy is uh, and and why it's important? Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, I guess it's important to say that I am not a therapist. I'm not like trained in that at all. I'm just interested in personal development and self-knowledge, self-awareness, whatever you want to call it, just um, becoming more connected with uh, what's going on in, in your internal world with your feelings and needs and um, yeah, maybe uncovering That's hidden right. motivations that you have for doing things and just reaching a greater level of self-awareness. Um, so there are so many different ways to do that, that you could almost kind of design your own curriculum any way you wanted to. Um, but a great way to start is just um, reading some books, uh, listening to some podcasts. Um, a lot of people in the liberty movement, I think, uh, have learned a great deal about, um, you know, just uh, getting in touch with with themselves and uh, healing from past trauma by listening to the Complete Liberty podcast from Wes Bertrand, who is, he's a personal friend of mine and also someone who I've admired for a long time and been listening to his podcast. And he has like so many free resources on there about uh, childhood trauma, about uh, healing from trauma, about nonviolent communication, the way that we talk to ourselves and communicate with others. Um, so that is a great free place to start, and all of it is available on the internet for you. All you have to do is be willing to put in the time. Okay, awesome, awesome. 
And uh, um, since you mentioned nonviolent compassion communication, uh, we are having Katie, Katie Test on next week to talk about that. So that's going to be oh, cool. possibly another another aspect that we can cover. And uh, yeah, yeah, guys, she's a friend of mine to too. Uh, that'll be a great podcast. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, NVC nonviolent communication is something that I've really benefited from learning about. Um, it's basically, you know, everything we do, we are we are doing to meet some kind of a need for ourselves, and everybody all human beings share a set of needs that we're trying to get met. And it's not just things like food, water, and shelter. It's things like, um, you know, self-expression and uh, meaning in our work and um, visibility to be seen and understood uh, for who we really are. So yeah, there's all kinds of needs that human beings have and we can always relate to each other about that, about the fact that we're all humans and yeah. uh, we're really a lot alike because we share these needs. Um, yeah, and so nonviolent communication is just a great a great tool to get in touch with what's really happening for you and to make connections with other people in a world where we're we're often like not getting our needs for freedom, choice, autonomy met. You know, yeah. we're told we're told what to do a lot. We're bossed around. We're in situations where we feel like we don't have much of a choice at all, but. Uh, learning about nonviolent communication can, yeah, just really help us understand what's going on there and articulate it and hopefully get some more of those needs for freedom and autonomy met. Awesome. Yeah, right on, right on. Um, so the, the second uh, item that's on that direct action list, uh, journaling. Um, what is it? Obviously, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but uh, what is it? How would someone go about doing it? And, and why do you think that's, that it's important in uh, um, helping to, to free the mind, so to speak? Yeah. Um, so journaling, I think, is a subset of uh, personal development or uh, it's a strategy for uh, undergoing personal growth and getting more in touch with yourself and also healing from past trauma. I, I'm realizing, I'm becoming aware that I don't think I answered the question about what is psychotherapy. So I, maybe I'll like just jump back to that really quick. Go, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I think the point of psychotherapy is to heal from past traumas that may be affecting the way that we live currently. So they might be, we might have experienced things in the past that were hurtful or traumatic to us, including things like, you know, uh, being bossed around and told what to do, not getting enough freedom in our lives, you know, experiencing pain and hurt and not, not being able to express ourselves. You know, trauma can come in all different kinds of forms and originate from all different kinds of sources, but we carry it around with us unless we process it and understand it and heal from it. And so the point of psychotherapy is to heal from past trauma and hopefully get to the point where you're able to live a happier, freer, and more self-expressed, more authentic kind of life. Um, so yeah, that's that would be what it is to me in a nutshell, what it means to me. Um, mm -hmm. And journaling is a strategy to get your thoughts out on paper and to really be able to understand and articulate things that are going on inside of you. You know, sometimes we feel sad or angry or whatever, helpless, but mm -hmm. we don't know why, you know, we can't really put it into words. Journaling can be a way of like asking ourselves questions that we then answer, um, giving ourselves empathy, which basically means being our own best friend, you know, like treating yourself as though you're, you're your own best friend and you're, you're giving yourself a little bit of empathy or advice or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Journaling can be a way to uh, express ourselves, uh, even if it's just to an audience of one, to remember things that we might want to look back on later and reflect on and, uh, you know, go back to in a year or five years, 10 years. Um, so, yeah, the, there's almost like as many things that you can do with journaling as as there are uh, people or like styles of writing. And uh, I narrated an audiobook a while ago called The Ultimate Guide to Journaling journaling and it's by a, another friend of mine named Hannah Brame. She's got the website becoming who you are. And uh, it's like the book is all about just like different strategies and prompts for journaling for personal growth and development. So I recommend to check that out if you're interested. Um, she's definitely got a freedom mindset mindset or perspective too. Okay. So uh, yeah, maybe folks would find that helpful. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Um, well, definitely. Thanks for thanks for those explanations. I wasn't quite sure what psychotherapy was, but yeah, that definitely uh, definitely clears that up. And we are running out of time. And there was one thing I, I kind of had to had to. I got uh, a question. Um, 
had to uh, talk to you about. Um, so yeah. you're you you are you have your PhD. You went to school for a long time, and yeah. uh, I'm currently in school um, or higher <laughs> higher level indoctrination is what I like to call it. But uh, um, so you definitely attended more more classes than I have so far. Um, I have a series titled Adventures in Illinois Higher Education. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much I discuss all the ridiculous nonsensical bullshit uh, that I come across in my uh, higher level indoctrination class- classes. Uh, for example, what are you I've already, studying? I'm just doing a journalis- or major in journalism and minor in public relations. Okay. So, um, and you're a college student? Mm-hmm, correct. Okay. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, already this semester I've heard my uh, American government politics teachers state that Donald Trump is a libertarian and that Rand Paul is an isolationist. Uh, also had my sociology teacher uh, praise Karl Marx and express her love for communism. And I know we pursued different avenues, um, or I'm pursuing different avenues than which you went down. But I was just curious, like, what... What did you experience in, in your extended time there? Um, did you have did you have any of those I guess uh, um, leftist tendencies come up? Um, any uh, examples that come to mind? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, first of all, like I feel you, man. It can be kind of lonely <laughs> in these academic environments, and you feel like libertarian ideas or views are not really welcome. That's how I felt mm-hmm. a lot. Um, Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was in graduate school, it was like a foregone conclusion for most people that the government should be funding science and that that was a really good thing. And they couldn't see some of the like perverse incentives that that might create that, you know, maybe people wouldn't want to do come to conclusions with their scientific experiments that were against what the government was uh, uh, standing for or were that were politically incorrect or for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I think like everybody has biases, including academics. And, um, I, but it's also important not to just like completely go the other way. Because I remember when I was in college, like I went to a uh, UMass Amherst, which is like a really liberal kind of hippie school. And <laughs> I almost sort of became like a young Republican for a while. It was kind of scary. And I like adopted some con- I guess conservative like social values or ideas and now like I really reject those I I know that they're not a good idea but um, you know so like there there might be some points in there when you have those classes where they're saying race and gender are social constructs you know Um, there might be some good points in there even though your professor agrees with Karl Marx uh, (laughs) (laughs) you can take you can just try to take a few things from it that you might be able to learn something from or agree with and leave the rest. And that's what critical thinking is really all about. And that's what school should be about is learning how to think, right? <laughs> so you yeah. can do that in life. Pick out the ideas that you that you find valid and that you agree with and uh, leave the rest behind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I, I do wish I, I it was about a year and a half in, I decided that uh, – um, I can I can still I could still make a, a decent living without college education, like taking on some sort of trade. But uh, I just I already spent too much time to where that it really isn't uh, it's it's not necessarily a plausible option anymore. Oh but, yeah, yeah, you put in so much time already. It's like the sunk cost, uh, almost a sunk cost fallacy, right? Yeah, like you've come this far, you might as well continue. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. <laughs> yeah. I so hear I that. can't Ooh. wait to get out of it. Um, but I've still got another two years, but. Um, so we are coming up to this uh, next break. Uh, why don't you? Uh, any uh, actually, there's one question I have to ask you before we. I've asked this in the past two months of interviews I've done, and pretty much uh, I'm going to put together a video of all the answers I get, and there's going to probably be about 20 of them in there. So, uh, in your opinion, what is the best strategy for restoring liberty? Oh, get li- get free in your own life. Work work towards freedom, and then. Find your friends and build and make an intentional community somewhere and try to get left alone however you can. Just so, yeah, work on first build freedom in your own life, then find some people who are on the same page with you, and then go live together and try to get left alone as much as you possibly can. That's my strategy anyway. (laughs) And there we go. There we go. So um, any closing thoughts uh, for the listeners before we we, uh, let you go? Oh, boy. No, but this was really fun. I just have to say, I really enjoyed this. Uh, it was cool talking with I you guys. Oh, definitely, definitely. Was Matt I'd... trying to say something? I feel like he might have been trying to get in. Uh, Matt? I have a question. Oh, go for it. Go for it. 
Um, Stephanie, are you familiar with the schools of anar anarchist thought? Uh, yes. Um, okay, how would you say you identify yourself in those categories? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I Let's just call me a voluntarist. I don't, like, what, what are my choices? <laughs> it's honestly whatever. Yeah. Um, I would just call myself a, a voluntarist, but uh, there's maybe a little bit of left libertarianism thrown in in there, I guess, if I'm honest. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll call that, I'll call it that for now. <laughs> Okay, right. awesome. So thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. It was uh, honestly a pleasure speaking with you, Stephanie, and I, I look forward to hopefully seeing you at uh, next year's Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. Yeah, thanks. Me too. And then um, anywhere I see you guys, uh, yoga class is open. We'll do some yoga. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. You have a great rest of your evening. Yeah, thanks. You too. All right. And there you have it, uh, Dr. Stephanie Murphy. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that interview. And uh, we're up uh, against a break here. When we come back, we will uh, introduce uh, the Austrian uh, School of Economics. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this short break. Take me so there's no escape. Right?